So this is a video review of Hewlett Packard's most recent graphing calculator called the HP Prime. Um, all right, so let's get started. One of the first things you'll notice right away is this very nice design. And then, of course, uh, when you turn it on, you'll notice that it's, a, it's got a backlit screen, so things are in color now. You can change the brightness by holding on and pressing plus or holding on and pressing minus. So this is, um, I guess, throwing back to the old days of uh, holding on plus and on minus to change the contrast in the much older HP calculators. Um, so what all do we have here? Um, first thing, if I type something like, say, 8 ninths, plus one, it looks just like it would if I were to write this uh, on paper by hand. Okay, That's the default entry called textbook mode. Let's hit the enter key. So uh, it computes that as an exact value, but it turns out that if you use this button right there, it will convert okay, over into decimal form. Now I'm in cast mode, that's up here, that's the computer algebra mode, and if I switch over to the, uh, the non-cast screen, and let's copy this, so cool feature, uh, touch screen, so I just I touched that uh, input up here, it copied it down here, let's hit enter, and let's try that button one more time, so it toggled to 17 over 9, hit it one more time and it toggles into uh, mixed fraction mode and then back to decimal mode. Um, in the computer algebra system screen, so think of it as two separate environments, one where you do kind of uh, approximations, um, so everything is computed out as a decimal and then the other screen, the, the cast mode here, oops, up there, um, where things are done in uh, in exact um, format unless you of course specify that you want an approximation. Okay. Um, so that's the textbook entry. You can actually change it to algebraic entry or even RPN for those of you who are more familiar with the older HP um, calculators. Um, okay, so we've already talked about the touchscreen, we've talked about the colors. Um, you can change the um, um, the settings here with uh, the shifted home key and uh, like I said before uh, you can use textbook algebraic or RPN entry um, you can even change the theme with the colors as well as the font sizes um, it comes with the ability to keep track of time and the date and you, you would actually see that um, always in the top right of the screen if you touch that corner it brings up a slightly bigger view where you can see the angle mode is currently in radians as opposed to degrees, the battery meter, the clock, and the date. Um, one thing that really impressed me with this calculator though is the, the speed with which uh, graphs are, are, are created. So let's go to the advanced graphing um, uh, app. Uh, I, well, let, let's show the the simple graphing app first. So this is what you would use to graph simple functions like one variable functions, say a polynomial x squared minus 3x plus 6. You hit plot and boom, uh, it, it comes on screen immediately. There's You don't even see any drawing animations. And for most simple functions, that's generally going to be the case. Uh, in case you thought think that uh, this was, was pre-rendered, let me go back and change the formula to say you know a 1 here. And let's take a look at the plot again. Okay, well, that didn't help. Let's do a zoom standard. I'm think I'm talking in a TI lingo here. Let's do an auto scale. So there we go. That's a an auto scale of the graph. Um, we can zoom out. And again, you what you see is instantaneous graphing. If we want to graph something a little more um, advanced. So implicitly defined functions or equations, let's do something like um, x squared minus y cubed 
is equal to, say, 1. And hit plot. And as you see there, again, very, very quick uh, graph. The numbers down here were changing, and I imagine the way it does this plot is it gives um, it first gives you a very rough sketch of the graph, and then it starts to sort of fine tune um, the course graph into something nice like this that you see here. And as it's doing that, I, I imagine that's why the x and y values were changing. Um, a really cool feature, though, is let's go ahead and say zoom in. If I want to do a trace, so right now my cursor is sitting there, but if I tap my screen here, the cursor changes over to there. So before, when you were doing a, when you would you know use a trace feature, usually you'd have to press the left or right arrow key to move the cursor, and, and then you know the x y values would update. But now we just kind of tap on the screen and move our cursor to where we want, and the y values update. And so here, you know, you can see it updating real time there. So that's really cool. Um, a really cool feature, sort of like an Easter egg, I guess, um, for this is when you're in the, the this, this um, plot screen, if you hit the menu key, you can actually look at some of the more advanced plots that they do. So they've got a little built-in gallery. Let's go ahead and check that out. So here we're graphing this crazy-looking equation, and it's uh, doing this in grayscale mode. Um, I'm going to interrupt this before it, it finishes, but all it's doing is it's graphing a, a family of inequalities and it uses different colors to represent those inequalities and that's essentially what we're seeing there with uh, those colors there. So here's another set of inequalities that were graphed, each color representing a different equation. And you can see it, you know, it graphs really quickly. Here uh, they managed to actually create digits and graph those using the floor function and, uh, and ceiling function as well as modular arithmetic. Um, so here are some more. Um, this is probably another set of inequalities. So very interesting uh, graphing algorithm, fairly fast, um, even when you're looking at filling up the entire screen with shading. Um, so here this is a family of functions. Um, there, there are so many here, you could spend lots of time just watching this thing graph all these different inequalities. But uh, anyway, that's enough of that. So some other features of this calculator. Um, it's got a built-in spreadsheet, which works very much like Excel. I'm not really going to spend too much time on that. Um, stats. It's, uh, it's got... Uh, whoops. One and two variable statistics. It's got, it's got a built-in solver. Uh, data collection, if you uh, have any sort of experiments you're, that you're running where you're collecting data. Uh, that, I think, requires an add-on that connects up to the USB port up here. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so lots of cool apps built in already. If you are interested in programming, you access the programming environment with Shift Program. And I wrote a little program already to do 3D graphing. Um, I first defined a function called fxy, and this is what my function looks like. So that was using shift define to create that. So let's exit out of there, and let's go back to our programming environment. I wrote a little program that does 3D graphing. It's pretty crude, but let's take a look at how that works. And then I'll show you the actual environment, the programming editor, I should say. Uh, some nice features there as well. So I'm just entering my, uh, my domain. N is the size of the grid. I'll do first um, a, f a 14 by 14, show you the speed, and then show you what it uh, looks like when I do 50 by 50 grid. We're basically creating a wireframe of a two-variable function. So let's tilt this uh, a little bit, zoom in with a factor of 10, and graph. Oops. So it's, it's graphed down here, and it's because uh, I didn't reset my, um, my window. Let's... Let's see if we can fix that issue. So, plot here. Uh, let's do this from, say, minus 10. Actually, is there a... I wonder if there's a way to reset this. Let's see if we, if we can go to function and plot setup. Whoops. 
function and here reset okay so let's take a look at yeah there we go there's our default window um, I need to get out of here go back to my program and let's run this this time from 8 to 8 negative 8 sorry that was negative 8 to 8 and again negative 8 to 8 we'll do 14 by 14 we won't rotate around the x-axis rotate negative 15 degrees about the y-axis and we'll tilt the or we'll rotate 10 degrees around the z-axis zoom factor of 10 and there's the graph if we were to repeat that but with a 50 by 50 wireframe grid and again this is just built uh, this is using the basic um, programming language to uh, to do this so the speed is pretty nice uh, okay so here we go and it, this is still graphing a lot faster than even on the 89 but here we've got you know 50 by 50 wireframe uh, with color so this is just a skeleton of what I would like to eventually turn into a, a 3D graphing app which is something you can also create um, looking into the code okay really cool feature again scrolling all I'm doing is I'm dragging my finger uh, if you want to move your cursor to edit a particular position so the cursor is right there okay again really nice feature um, this thing also comes with a CD containing an emulator for um, PCs so you can do a lot of the development on your computer because I know for sure that many of us probably could care less for uh, typing programs especially long ones on a keyboard such as this um, that beeping there was my laptop turning off this, this calculator does not have a beeping feature unlike the HP 48 and HP 50 uh, calculators um, anything else well that's really all that I kind of figured out I've only uh, had this for about a day and uh, once I figure out some more features of this calculator things that I think are cool then uh, I'll share it with with you all so thanks for watching and catch you next video